Hi everyone, today I would like to talk about my research on sustainable additive manufacturing for biomedical applications. Then, why is additive manufacturing or 3D printing important for biomedical applications? Because this unique and automated processing method can provide geometry freedom to designers without manufacturing constraints, allowing for customized and demand-based production for biomedical devices. Also, this process doesn't require any additional tools or sacrificial models, reducing fabrication cost and waste for small volume manufacturing. Currently in the market, 3D printed products such as printed drugs or printed implants have been actively launched after the successful FDA approval. Like 3D printing in other industry, industries, 3D printing for bioengineering can go through the similar printing process from image design up to post-processing treatment in order to get a final product. Three printing technologies have been commonly applied, stereolithography operators in short SLA, direct ink writing or selective laser sintering SLS. Then how can we make 3D printing for biomedical applications more sustainable? In general, saving materials and energy for 3D printing processes should be ideal for sustainability. In order to do that, four key elements have been explored in my lab. First component is sustainable materials for 3D printing. Many biomaterials are naturally obtained with additional treatment or synthesized with biomolecules. The source of biomaterials isn't cheap, and most modification processes are not environmentally friendly. Thus, our lab is continuously finding various sources of natural products with eco-friendly and cheap treatment process used for 3D printing inks or supporting matrices. For instance, customized orthopedic cast or skin patch can be used by restructuring the original structure or modulizing parts for selective replacement. Then those approaches can minimize waste of materials or utilize more cost-effective materials, reducing overall material cost. On the other hand, we can also develop new 3D printing path or algorithm to minimize the printing time and material usage for the same products. This efficient printing can save time, cost, and energy. And finally, many bioprinting processes require cell-laden inks with various additional printing units to minimize cell death during printing. Scalability and consistency of printing is also quite challenging. Thus, my lab is developing the cheap and simple cell protection strategy to increase cell viability on the various printing uh, conditions. Our recent works include development of recycle recyclable and energy efficient freeform 3D printing, for biomedical applications, as well as development of new renewable biomaterials. Besides that, we also have been working on recyclable biomedical devices with smart materials. In this talk, I will focus on our materials and printing strategy, particularly with freeform 3D printing platforms. Each 3D printing technology has its own pros and cons as shown in this table. My lab has focused on direct uh, ink, three, uh, ink writing method due to its applicability to various biomaterials with reasonable resolutions with or without cells. However, two main issues should be considered carefully for a uh, DIW. The extrudable shear thinning Inks require consistent rheological behavior with good safe supportability through fast solidification. However, soft materials, particularly hydrogen, usually don't have sufficient safe supporting capability due to 3D structures or intrinsic material properties associated with volume shrinkage. Thus, in 2015, the US team proposed a new 3D printing approach printing and liquid. The viscoplasty supporting matrix, often composed of dispersed hydrogen particles, provide support during printing of soft materials. The unique viscoplasty behavior of this matrix 
can accommodate the translation of printing nozzle, securing the deposit materials at the printing position. Using this approach, we develop various printing platforms depending on target applications. In terms of target applications, those printing platforms can be classified into positive, negative, and reactive freeform 3D printing. Positive freeform 3D printing systems focus on printed ink for their final products. Thus, the supporting matrix is often designed to provide support to printed inks from the printing up to post-curing process. The negative freeform printing uses the supporting matrix as a final product, thus a sacrificial ink is used. After the printing is completed, the supporting matrix is solidified and the ink is removed. This system can be used for 3D vascularized tissue systems or 3D microfluidics. The reactive or functional freeform 3D printing induce chemical reactions or in situ functionalization during printing by incorporating chemical agents into both ink and the supporting matrix. Then the 3D printed product is functionalized during the printing process. We developed this 3D printing platform for hydrogen composite scaffolds. In this talk, we are more focused on the positive freeform 3D printing uh, for the biomedical applications. The first freeform 3D printing system was developed for flexible 3D membranes which can be used for the flexible and wearable substrates for biomedical devices. Human body is intrinsically curved, thus the flat and flexible membrane cannot be adapted to this covered, curved body surface. Therefore, the interfacial issues are often commonly occurred or observed when the flat devices are introduced to the human body. In this work, we try to develop a direct uh, fabrication method of thin 3D membrane uh, which is used for those devices. A conventional approach to fabricate silicon-based 3D membrane requires a sacrificial mold to cast the membrane. Our platform allows the one-step printing process with an omnidirectional printing path, processing intrinsic geometry curvature without any sacrificial mold. Since silicon requires a high temperature post-curing process, thus its supporting matrix should be thermally stable in addition to good supporting capability. Thus, we chose biocompatible hygienate, and through encapsulation, hygienate microjets were formed. Those hygienate microjets were dispersed in saline solution with packing density of 95%, showing viscoplastic behavior and good transparency. Before printing silicone membranes, we also confirmed that the mechanical behavior of silicone didn't change due to the supporting matrix. Thus, we compared the mechanical properties of freeform printed silicone in Algerian matrix with those, casted, those of casted silicone. The mechanical properties of those silicone specimens were almost identical besides slightly anisotropic stiffness of 3D printed samples due to printing directions. Then we also developed the 3D printing path of customized 3D membranes. We chose Elbo as a model system and successfully uh, developed the computation algorithm and then create the printing G code for freeform 3D printing. This video shows how this 3D silicone membranes is printed. To save time and efforts, we printed several silicone membranes all together within one agenda supporting matrix. All printed membranes were consistent, showing good printing quality. Since the agenda supporting matrix with the silicone requires high temperature curing, often the hydration of agenda microjets were observed. To make the supporting matrix more applicable for practical use, we also developed the recycling process of the alginate slurry. Thus, the large scale fabrication of silicone membrane becomes more feasible and with this recycled alginate supporting matrix. Now I move to my next topic on pollen as the new 3D printing material system. 
Due to its exceptional tough nature, pollen is regarded as a diamond of the plant world. Pollen plays a critical role in plant reproduction, particularly protect the cells and deliver them to the other plants. More interestingly, as a material, pollen has very unique structure and a uniform size. They are also very abundant and eco-friendly materials. Our recent work with Professor Joe and Professor Shresh was to transport hard pollen grains into processable soft microgels through a simple soap making process. After the pollen microgels were obtained, the unique bilayer, bilayer structure provides stimulus responsive behavior, which shows great potential as a new biomaterial and smart uh, biomaterial systems. In our case, we use pollen microgels as new 3D printing materials used for both bioinks and supporting matrices based on their unique lerological properties. Pollen hydrogen inks can be used for 3D printed tissue scaffolds, and the microgel also can be used as mechanical reinforcement and the smart draw carriers. In the meantime, the pollen microgel suspension can be used for the supporting matrix of the freeform 3D printing system, accommodating their soft ink materials for the various uh, complex 3D structures. As a bio ink, pollen based hydrogen inks were highly printable regardless of pollen loading amounts. Also, pollen microgels were well dispersed in the solution without any aggregation. Thus, there is no clogging issue during printing which allows efficient and fast production of scaffolds. Also, since pollen microgels are stimulus responsive, it can be also used as smart drug release. We confirm that the fluorescent loaded pollen microgels in the scaffold release dyes with existence of stimulus in the environment. We also further confirmed biocompatibility and structure integrity of 3D printing of pollen scaffolds at 3D cell culture platforms. Cells show very good cell viability, creating 3D cell network within the scaffold. Also, the scaffolds can last more than two weeks without any mechanical degradation. As a supporting matrix, the pollen microgel suspension shows suitable rheological properties, particularly viscoplasticity, um, good physiotropy thiso and the recovery. The rheological properties of pollen microgel suspension can be tuned in terms of pollen volume fraction and the gel stiffness. We can also print the soft hydrogen inks inside the pollen microgel suspension with complicated structures. The printing structures were not interfered or collapsed during printing and could last more than a day without any structural change. Like alginate microgel supporting matrix for silicone rubber, we also use pollen microgel suspension for silicone rubber or 3D printing. The printed silicone 3D mesh was just as good as the alginate, the, 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 the silicone uh, mesh uh, printed within the silicone microgel supporting matrix. Thus, we believe that the, this pollen microgel suspension should be a good supporting matrix for various soft material printing, like alginate microgels. However, pollen microgels are more sustainable and environment friendly since the microgel formation process of the pollen, pollen is more cost effective and scalable uh, compared with the alginate slurry. And also, the pollen is abundant in nature. In this talk, I introduced several approaches to sustainable 3D printing for various biomedical applications, particularly focusing on freeform 3D printing systems and their materials. Printing in liquid brings many new ideas and printing options for materials, particularly biomaterials, which are usually softened with a low printability. To make this printing method more sustainable, more recyclable, and more renewable, the biocompatible materials uh, with a uh, the better cost-effective source should be developed through cost-effective um, the modification process. Our approaches to development of recyclable supporting matrices in the system and discovery of cost-effective and nature-driven um, 
derived materials should increase sustainability of free from 3D uh, systems, which eventually can be used as a new 3D printing platforms or through innovative combination of materials and the 3D printing technology. I appreciate my research team at NTU and collaborators in Korea. Those research projects were supported by MOE, NRF, NAMI, and ASTAR. Thank you for your kind attention during this talk, and I'm happy to answer your question. Thank you.